Calling to order the October 27, 2020 County Board of Supervisors meeting. Are we certified in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, the agenda was posted on the 23rd of October at 9 a.m. Next is the Pledge of Allegiance. will be roll call. There are 22 supervisors present. Are there any presentations? We have none. County administrators report and presentation of the 2021 proposed budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Well, here we are. The 2021 proposed budget for, for many of us. Uh, this is a good day because a lot of time and effort goes into it. So it's my objective tonight to give you an overview of the 2021 proposed budget. Of course, it was distributed last week. You heard a little bit about it. But as I said last week, everyone, everyone in this room, everyone in this organization has had an opportunity to get their fingerprints on this budget, have input, ask questions. So uh, thank you to all involved. Uh, I have some PowerPoint slides. And let's see how we roll here. So that isn't super visible. Can most of you make that out or not? Essentially, I want to take a few minutes to step back because we have seven new county board supervisors. We're, we're live now. Uh, broadcast live so we may have people viewing for the first time and hearing about the budget process for the first time and so I want to make sure that we can give everyone a feel for what all goes into this so stepping back I mean every year in February we're already talking about budget assumptions estimates making preparations and it definitely involves the chair the vice chair the executive committee the finance committee they're very closely involved with that but a lot goes into just preparing for the year ahead. So already in February and May, you know, we'll wrap this up here in November, right? In a couple of months from now, we'll be working on the 2022 budget. It just happens that quickly. It is a, it is a long process, but as you know, it's a very effective and collaborative process. The executive and finance committees are the key committees I work with up front to get clear guidance on what their expectations are, what goals, objectives, do they want to set? What do they want to see happen? This is your budget. You're the policymakers. As staff, it's our job to implement it and see those programs and services through. The County Board Leadership Forum has really been, I think, one of the secrets to our success. We've had an annual County Board Leadership Forum now for 20 years or so. And as you're all aware, we get together, we look at our past performance, what's worked well, where we could improve. We compare and contrast ourselves to other counties. We look at our financial health, and we have uh, presentations from key department heads, but there's a lot that goes into that uh, meeting. And one of the key things that we end with is talking about our proposed budget ahead. You know, this is very distracting, Finance Director Wendy Sharnan. Is, there, is that everything okay over here? Okay. Very distracting, right? Speaking of very good people, uh, we, we talk about the budget and what's proposed and what our challenges are, our budget assumptions, and ultimately we come out of that annual county board leadership forum with, it's not an action meeting as you know, it's an informational meeting, but we all come out of it with a common understanding of this is what's ahead of us, here's key challenges, here's opportunities for improvement, and the Finance and Executive Committee at that point has established a goal and what they want to see happen with the property tax. 
tax levy? Do they want it to go up? Do they want it to go down? Do they want it to remain the same? What the, what's that goal going to be? Also at that meeting, we establish or at least propose targets for all the respective departments. So we come out of that meeting with a common understanding amongst the board about what's ahead of us. When I talk about establishing a goal, you know, years ago, the board probably didn't set a goal for the levy. I mean, years ago, all the departments individually prepared their budgets. It all got pulled together. And I kid you not, uh, 25 years ago, we saw increases in double digits in the property tax levy. Once the county board started establishing a goal, that really changed our framework. If they said, well, we want no more than a 3% increase or no more than a 2% increase, or this year we don't want to see any increase at all. And that's how it was for a number of years. You, the board, would establish that goal. And then as staff, we'd work with all the department heads, establish specific targets for each department, and they had to come in and deliver a proposed department budget that positioned the county, the county board, to achieve that goal. It worked very effectively. Of late, we haven't had to work real hard on establishing a goal, have we? Because now it's net new construction. It's a state one-size-fits-all cap of net new construction. And on average, it's been in the 1% range, 1.5% range. It's been challenging, but we've risen to that challenge. And this year as well, the county board, specifically finance and executive, established that goal of net new construction, and then we established targets. So we, as you can see through the process, then we, we have our budget kickoff. This year we did that virtually for the first time. Normally we bring all our department heads in and key accounting staff with finance. We go through the budget instructions, which are very substantial. And a real credit to Wendy and Jeremy and all of the finance staff. Everything is laid out. Everything is clear on what the expectations are, what the respective targets are for each department. And they're not all the same. Not every department is the same in the revenue sources they receive, the priorities that you have established as policymakers, the challenges they face. They're all a little different. But I wanted to uh, acknowledge our finance department staff and, and everyone involved with the budget instructions because, again, they do a really effective job with it. We go through that budget process. A key piece of it, obviously, is working with all the departments, making sure they propose a budget that meets the expectations, hits their target. If they come and meet with me or Wendy and they haven't proposed a budget that hits the target we've established, they need to go back and return. It's an expectation to hit that. I can tell you it's been over a decade since the department head hasn't come in and hit the target. They hit the target, and then if they need additional resources or have ideas for where they want to expend more or do more programming or services or make changes, they can identify that separately. So they certainly can be creative and come up with different thoughts, but they have to hit the target that we've established. We, we, we meet with the liaison committees after they've met with the county Myself, the county administrator, and the finance director, the liaison committees then review it all, have input. They may make refinements, ask for changes. Then it goes to the finance committee. The five-year capital plan is obviously a key component of our overall budget and a credit, a complement to the county board and our organization. We're looking out five years and what capital projects we're going to need, how we're going to pay for it, how much we're going to bond, how we're going to make those payments. It's all about being fiscally responsible and planning accordingly and how much we can do. And as most of you may recall, the county board established a self-imposed bonding limitation of about $5.5 million. The Finance Committee upped the ante and established $2.5 million a year or $5 million every other year. And that's largely what we've been doing. And that is now contributing to our bonding costs our debt service actually going down. You didn't have to do that. I think the auditor that was here last week said if you look at our overall bonding and debt service, we're really well positioned in comparison to a lot of other local units of government. The reason we are is because of you being proactive in establishing that self-imposed limitation. And then here we are. We published the budget. We distributed it last week. And tonight, of course, we're presenting it.
In summary, we're looking at a tax rate, and I touched on this briefly last night, and I know it's in the information you received, but we're looking at a tax rate reduction of 26 cents, and that's because equalized value went up about, what, 7%, 6.88%. So uh, the good news is, as values go up, the tax rate goes down, and that's beneficial for all of us. So that's helpful. That's not where the rubber meets the road, but that's helpful when the tax rate goes down. And it is, it is going down for the fifth consecutive year. So that, that says two things, really. We're seeing some nice, nice growth in Sheboygan County, and we're not just taking that and spending more. We're, we're utilizing that to distribute some tax rate relief. Our tax levy overall, the levy, what we control, is actually going up 1.56%. Again, within the net new construction increase, which I believe was 1.88%. So we're well within the state imposed levy limitation. You can see the levy change over last year. We were up 1.1 million at 2.4%. This year, 1.56%. And then overall, with the overall budget, it's actually about an $8 million reduction in our $150 million budget, 158 to 150. And the reason predominantly for that is not that we've dramatically changed any of our departments, programs, or services. In fact, we haven't recommended or sought any layoffs to our organization this year. We're really largely in a maintain quality programs and services, maintain the important services we provide in the community. But because, uh, but because of uh, capital outlay, capital outlay projects predominantly, uh, that can ebb and flow each year. Um, you know, five-year plan projects, key capital investments, that can ebb and flow with that number a little bit. But it is going down almost 5%. For a $100,000 house, and many people in this community own a $100,000 house. Many people own a $200,000 house. They can do the math. But for a $100,000 house, on average, your property taxes will decrease $26. And, of course, that will vary depending on the area, depending on whether you have a library or not. There are implications depending on how much your home may have gone up in value. Big picture, $150 million budget. And the big four, as I like to fondly refer to them, are the Sheriff's Department, the Transportation Department, Health and Human Services, and Rocky Knoll. They make up almost two-thirds of our overall budget. Critically important departments doing really valuable work in our, in our community. But, of course, there's a lot of other things going on. We continue to invest in in uh, capital projects and, ma and making improvements to our facilities or public uh, resources. We continue to have some debt service. We have planning resources and development. I'm going to touch on that a little bit more in a moment. You can see it's only about $2.2 million for planning and conservation. But in a moment, I'm going to share some of the grants they've recently tapped into and the good work that's going to achieve. UW Extension and then general government, all the other departments combined. So that gives you the big picture, but really what a lot of our constituents locally are concerned about is the property tax levy. At $150 million is property tax levy, state, federal, private pay, uh, fees, fines, forfeitures, right? All that combined. But the property tax levy is what I think many people hold you accountable for, hold all of us accountable for. They don't want to see property taxes increase. And certainly with state caps in place, that has put a barrier in place, the board can go to referendum or can seek to exceed that, which we are seeing in some communities, some counties across the, the state, but we haven't had to do that. And we haven't had to do that because we've worked very effectively in collaboration to establish priorities and work with the limitations that we have. But what's noteworthy with this slide, what I like to point out, is if we're going to control our costs, if we're going to control property tax levy, how much savings are we going to get if we go after UW Extension or even planning resources and development? Not much, right? You still have to look at some of these larger departments. And the Sheriff's Department obviously relies on a lot of property tax levy. 
We're fortunate, in my opinion, to have a really effective sheriff. I think Corey Raisler is incredibly thoughtful, very knowledgeable, knows his team inside and out, highly regarded in the, in the community, and he does a good job keeping his eye on the budget. Where his department, where we struggle as a whole, is sometimes with staffing, as you know, on corrections and dispatch. I mean, that, that is the struggle, and, and we all know that. We're all well aware of that. But from a standpoint of being mindful of his budget and doing his best to keep costs in check, yet continue to pro provide effective law enforcement, I'm proud of our sheriff and proud of our sheriff's department. But look at where that levy is. They're 20 million of the 51 million. If the sheriff's department needs to go up five or 10 percent, we're in trouble. We're going to have to cut other departments in order to achieve that. So we really need our largest departments to be very mindful and cost sensitive to how much they're relying on the levy. Health and Human Services, 14 million. I mean, a big chunk there. But look at transportation. We've actually reduced the levy for transportation significantly because, as you know, now we're relying on the sales tax revenue. And has that been a wonderful development for Sheboygan County? And then, of course, Rocky Knoll. That's a $14 million operation, yet the property tax levy is under a million dollars. Some of you may recall that back in the day, our health care centers, we had three of them. Comprehensive Health Care Center, Sunny Ridge, and Rocky Knoll. Our property tax subsidy for those three facilities at the time was $6.1 million. $6.1 million of tax levy was going to subsidize or assist with the operations of three facilities that we aren't mandated or required to provide. And uh, for those of you who have been on the board for a while, that was a, a challenging process, but clearly righted the ship. And now our, our subsidy, our levy, is under a million. And of course, Rocky Knoll continues to do and provide great service in the community. I wanted to thank uh, Emmett Feldner, who I see in the room today. And I also wanted to, to call out Diana Dombrowski from the Sheboygan Press. Both of them have done such a nice job following our budget development. And if you read the article from Diana in the press, I thought her overview was very nice and well done. And of course, Emmett has followed us, I think, for over two decades. There isn't a reporter I respect more than Emmett Feldner. He put our charts and graphs in the Plymouth Review. I noticed that this morning. And I want to thank and acknowledge both of them for the job they do, sharing information with the community and, and letting them know how we're doing. Tax rate I touched on earlier, um, good to see it going down. But this is, the, this is the chart that I think means the most to, to us in this room and in the community. This is the levy. This is how much are we expending of their hard-earned dollars and using for county programs and services. And the, the good news is if you look at the last dozen years or so, our average property tax levy increase each year, on average, it's gone up and down a little bit, right? 1.24%. 1.24% each year since 2010. That is remarkable. That is a reflection of your thoughtful leadership, being fiscally conservative, I mean, that's a track record that I think any county would be very pleased to have and proud of. Difficult to see here, but I just wanted to point out a couple of the departments that had uh, increases that we need to be, you know, obviously mindful of, and you have this in your, in your packet. But, of course, every department, depending on the size of the department and what's going on, that increase could look more or less dramatic. Uh, the Sheriff's Department is coming in with a 2.9% increase. Well, that's more than net new construction, right? That's more than the 1.88% or the overall 1.5% increase in the levy. Do we support law enforcement? You're darn right we do. Health and Human Services, 2.76%, more than the overall levy increase. Do we support Health and Human Services? Of course we do two critically important departments. 
Rocky Knoll, 8.83% increase. But again, keep in mind that $14 million budget, levy less than a million, sometimes those percentages can be a little misleading in what's really going on big picture, right? We'd rather not see more levy going to Rocky Knoll, but I think there's a lot of support in this chambers and across the county for the very important work that Rocky Knoll does. In fact, Rocky Knoll continues to be a five-star facility. They had a state surveyor pop in this week whenever that happens. Think of the angst and uncertainty that's going on in all of our nursing homes across the county right now. Seven of nine have COVID currently going on in their nursing homes. Assisted living facilities. I mean, the level of work that our healthcare providers are doing, they deserve so much credit. And then you have a state surveyor walk in and they're looking over your shoulder and checking things out and that's what can change those ratings. Uh, the surveyor came this week and I'm sure you saw, some of you saw the report from Kayla, no deficiencies. We maintain our five-star rating, the best it gets. Uh, very pleased with that, very proud of our team at Rocky Knoll. We're also offering childcare at Rocky Knoll. And sometimes I don't think this has gotten really the attention or accolades that it deserves, but we did that to help recruit and retain staff. And um, our employees are now starting to utilize it more and more. I think we have 10 uh, infants or children now utilizing the daycare there. It was a risk, it was a leap of faith, but we had the space and it's really, uh, it's really working out well. So it's again, a credit to Kayla and everyone involved with the developing that. The administrator's office, the county administrator's office, a 31% increase. What is going on with the county administrator's office? Well, we went from two to three staff. We're not a very large area or office, right? But from two to three staff, of course, that had a significant impact on our levy. This young lady that used to be over my left shoulder, did Elaine leave? Elaine Bosman, as you know, has been promoted to deputy administrator, unanimously supported by exec, finance, HR. Uh, she's really so effective and provides such value. But please be mindful. Again, you look at that increase, you're like, hmm. Well, we took savings from a vacant position in the HR department and transitioned that over to the county administrator's office. So we went from two to three staff. HR has one less staff. Their overall department budget went down. Our office budget went up. It's a wash. So if someone wants to point out that, wow, what's going on there? I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Half percent sales tax. Huh. Whenever we talk about this, and we don't very often, right? But I, I'm just so proud of... Tom Wagner and Roger Destruti and, and the board as a whole for supporting this. This was heavy lifting and we all know it. And there wasn't a chair that I haven't worked with since 1999 who didn't say at some point we're going to need this. And in 2017, the board implemented it. And as you know, we're using every single penny of the property of the sales tax, of the half percent sales tax, which again is tagged on to the states. They get their 5%, right? This is half percent for Sheboygan County. That, what, 65 of 72 counties or thereabouts have now. We use every cent of it for our transportation system and for direct property tax relief. Every penny. It all goes to transportation. We share 1.5 million with our communities for their transportation needs and we provide about a million or so for direct property tax relief. It is a reliable funding source in a time when everyone was worried about how are they gonna maintain their roads and bridges, bridges and, and be fiscally responsible. As we all know, the worse they get, the more expensive it is to fix them. And I really credit the board for doing this. Those are the dollars that we've been receiving each year. It actually exceeded our expectations a little bit. You recall this year we were worried that with COVID and uh, so many things being canceled, including the Ryder Cup, or were we going to see a significant hit in our sales tax revenue? We took action already, I think, in March, April to cut back on some spending, reprioritize, make some, make some decisions so we wouldn't have a huge variance, negative variance at the end of the year. So credit to Greg Schnell and many others for doing that. 
And uh, the good news is the sales tax revenue is actually on pace to uh, meet our budget for 2021. Year to date, it's up 2.7%. We certainly saw a decrease in the years after, in the months after COVID hit, but year to date, uh, we're looking all right. Key initiatives. Well, what's all in this budget? Well, as I said, and I feel that way for really a number of years now, you know, when you have net new construction caps, you're not going to spend a lot of additional money or create a lot of new programs and services, right? You're going to reprioritize and do the best you can to gain efficiencies and maintain the quality programs and services we have. Yet every year, thanks to our department heads and our liaison committees and the collaboration, we do reprioritize and we do address initiatives. Um, our enhanced community-based mental and behavioral health services. We're contracting for three additional residential treatment facilities. One of them may be trying to call right now. <laughs> okay. So that's in play, and we're, and, we're, and we're very pleased to see that happen. Initiative of Matt Stripmotter and his staff, uh, certainly with the support of the Health and Human Services Committee. So we're going to be adding, and they're in the midst of being developed. Actually, it got slowed down this year because of COVID, but we'll be doing more to help people in need. And I'm, I'm proud of that. Continue focus on improving child welfare services. <laughs> we are doing everything we can to get child per, children, more children permanent homes. And Crystal and Health and Human Services and our judges... Everyone involved, including some of the people on the phone. Mm -hmm. Elaine, do I need to give you a second? These are our department heads online. Rather than uh, everyone being crammed in here this evening, as you know, we wanted to promote safety and social distancing, so all of our department heads have called in, and I presume Elaine right now is trying to get them back on the phone if anyone has questions. Is that correct, Elaine? Yes. So thank you for that, Elaine. Uh, we're looking to enhance alternatives to incarceration at the Sheriff's Department. Big focus on trying to reduce the number of people in our detention center, the cost associated with it, and the Sheriff and others have been involved with looking at enhancing alternatives to incarceration. We're going to be adding some office space. We added staff last year, this year as part of this budget, and it's making a difference. It's a step in the right direction. We're enhancing our, radio, our emergency radio system. We're adding staff to the Clerk of Courts Department. I'm not enthusiastic about this. Not because Melody doesn't need the help and not because the Clerk of Courts Office doesn't do a tremendous job serving the five circuit courts, but because this is a state-mandated department. Everything about the Clerk of Courts is state-mandated. We have to do it. Yep, years ago we were spending five, $600,000 of levy to subsidize these state-mandated programs and services, and now it's closer to $1.3 million. We're recommending $100,000 more property tax levy for the clerk of courts. Is it the right thing to do? I th absolutely, I think it's the right thing to do. Melody needs to help. Her stat co-workers need the help. The judges need the help. We're not seeing less demand for that, those services, but for me personally, this is an area where the state, if they want to help us keep property taxes in check, then take more responsibility for what you're mandating us to do. Want an example of one where you can be helpful? Start with the clerk of courts. And we've had this discussion before with our area legislators, good people, and we need to continue to have the discussion. But of course, the state, like us, has limited resources, and some of these things just tend to be out of sight, out of mind. But here is a great example of a 100% state-mandated operation and we're putting more and more property tax levy to subsidize it. Unlike Register of Deeds. Register of Deeds is a state-mandated operation. How much property tax levy goes to the Register of Deeds? None. So it presents an opportunity. Maintaining our, and improving our transportation system, we're, we're investing more there, not only in transportation with the sales tax revenue, but the airport. Uh, what a beautiful airport we have and how important it is for economic development. 
our quality of life here. It's wonderful. Extending the old Plank Road Trail from Greenbush to Fond du Lac. You know, this was planned already back in, I think, 2006. But we just received a stewardship fund to see that through. And, of course, that's going to be a wonderful amenity. More importantly, Highway 23. Uh, that, was, that was certainly something that uh, former Chairman Tom Wagner and Roger Destrudy and, and, I mean, our board, we advocated for. We kept reminding people of the importance of it, and finally it's getting done. It's so wonderful to see that happening. It's going to be such a safety enhancement and so important for our quality of life and economic development. Upgrading the courthouse heating system. No doubt some of you have heard. There are certain areas in this courthouse that could use some enhancements, and, and that's going to be in play. Road repairs for the entrance at UW Sheboygan Green Bay. That's our facility. Many people don't know it. Those are our buildings, our grounds. The state operates it. We own it. And it's looking a little rough on the exterior, particularly. Has anyone played tennis or pickleball out there recently? I know you haven't because they're... There are serious cracks at that tennis court, and it's an eyesore. And with that beautiful hospital going up next door, we wanted to enhance the front door of our important uh, UW Green Bay University and uh, create a little more green space there. Software upgrades at Health and Human Services, the, uh, the new Marsh multipurpose building construction. As you know, a shout out to the friends of, of the Marsh. They raised about $2 million to see that through, though the county is providing about 350000 So we have certainly uh, ownership for that and ultimately will have ownership because, uh, like the tower, uh, friends of the Marsh then will uh, donate it to the county. But what a wonderful collaborative partnership between the friends of the Marsh Kohler, Sargento, Bratz family, and many others who contributed to help bring that to fruition, or at least right now the work is in play. Mitigation bank development, we haven't talked about that in a while. Uh, Aaron will be up here shortly to give an update on the mitigation bank, but we're going to be making uh, ongoing recreational enhancements out there and improving the resources. And speaking of planning and conservation and improving the resources, I showed you earlier that line item where, you know, rather modest budget in the grand scheme of things. Yet Aaron Brault and his team, have they been successful in acquiring grants? $8.3 in grants. And these grants right now are not part of this budget because we just received them. Right? We just received them. So they receipt this year will largely implement next year, but it's just so wonderful when we don't have to use property tax levy or other funds to make enhancements. We're looking at uh, stream restoration projects, working with Ozaki, Washington, Fond du Lac, and others to improve the, the Milwaukee River watershed. Uh, I mentioned the extension of the old plank road. That's what the state stewardship uh, funds are for, the 175000 Improving our mapping capability, improving culverts and uh, the construction structure for the south ditch at the Sheboygan Marsh. Uh, just, just credit to Aaron Brault and, and, and their staff and, of course, the Planning Resource Agriculture and Extension Committee for the good work and being proactive to go after these grants and help make good things happen in Sheboygan County. Speaking of good things, sixth consecutive year that we've received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Dave touched on it last week, our auditor. I don't think he said six straight years, though. This isn't just handed to you. You earn it. Wendy Sharnan, Jeremy Federer, Stephanie Albright, Jeremy Fredericks, Evan Grossen, Austin Grinke, Lucy Vu, Natasha Roll, Mary Jablonski. All of our accounting leads, all of our staff in the finance department help make good things happen. And, and this is a real nice reflection, not only on Wendy and her team, but all of us, all of us. And then finally, I wanted to conclude, and this may be more for some of our viewers or possibly some of our, our, our newer board members, but it's easy to forget what we've done together over the years to position ourselves for success. Preparing a budget and working with very modest resources doesn't just happen. 
Ask Tom Wagner and, and some of the other board members who know county board chairs across the state and what their budget processes are like, how long their county board meetings go, how much angst there is and what they're going to cut and what they're going to keep. We've got something going here, <laughs> and it's truly because of collaboration. It, bottom line, we work together to problem solve. Over the years, we have consolidated all sorts of areas. Register and probate with Clerk of Courts, Comprehensive Health Care Center with Rocky Noah, Printing with Information Technology, Privatization of Sunny Ridge, UW, UW Extension with UW Sheboygan, Property Listing with Treasurer, Land and Water Co-located with Planning, ADRC from Baxter Building to Sheboygan Falls, Land and Water Consolidated with Planning, Payroll with Finance, Airport with Highway, Child Support with Health and Human Services. We combined emergency dispatch with the city, installed a ring of fiber, our transportation complex, we consolidated three highway sheds into one transportation facility. Facilities. Veteran services were co-located with the Aging and Disability Resource Center. That's heavy lifting. It doesn't just happen. And it's contributed to cost savings and efficiency. In 2007, we had 1,350 employees. 1,350 employees. Today, we have about 850 employees. Just about every department here has made adjustments over the years. The bulk of that was our health care centers going from three facilities to one, no question. But everyone has contributed. We also haven't been afraid to bring outside experts in and tell them to dive in. And often people are a little uncomfortable doing that, right? But our finance committee has really led the charge with saying, let's Let's get, some, let's get some folks to come in here and assess how we're doing things and what we can do better. We did a program evaluation and prioritization process twice, Health and Human Services, Matt Stripmotter, uh, Brian Hoffman and the Health and Human Services Committee, they're looking at all their programs right now. I think there's 44 or 47 in, in health, health and Human Services alone. Give them credit for that. This list again, sharing the purchasing agent with the city, in-health clinic, joining the Wisconsin Counties Association with our health insurance, number of things were done to save dollars. But back to the Finance Committee and these operational studies, in addition to the program evaluation and prioritization process where we identified 207 programs and services, what were mandatory, what was discretionary, what were the priorities, what did they cost, was it tax levy, federal, state dollars that supported them. In addition to doing that, we've asked consultants to come in without an agenda and say, go in and look at our departments and tell us what we can do better. And that can be a little uncomfortable but we've welcomed it, and it isn't a silver bullet. Sometimes we've gotten some really helpful recommendations where we can streamline gain efficiencies, provide better quality programs and services. Other times, maybe they say, hey, you're doing a good job. Keep doing what you're doing. But we've done it at the healthcare centers, which obviously led to significant changes. Health and Human Services, Sheriff's Department, Highway, Child Support, Information Systems, Clerk of Courts, Human Resources, Health and Human Services, uh, administration, and most recently, the Treasurer's Office. I think it's a best practice that brings us value and, again, offers an outside perspective and suggestions for improvement. So with that, I just want to say thank you for bearing with me. I know that was a little longer introduction than some of you needed for the 2021 budget. But we do have, which is a good thing, we do have more people, I think, perhaps than ever before, paying attention to what we're doing here. And that's good. That's good. Come on in. Attend our committee meetings. Get online and listen. Get engaged with your local government. Offer suggestions for improvement. That's good. So my compliments to all of you for your work for your collaborative approach, for your leadership. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Next is the public hearing on the 2021 proposed budget. The notice of public hearing was published on October 9th, 2020. 
And the public hearing on the proposed 2021 budget is now open for anyone wishing to be heard. All right, we have Hans Kuhn from Elkhart Lake. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Hans Kuhn, my uh, my old address is in 8894 Snake Road, Elkhart Lake. Um, some of the half cent sales tax um, was provided to the town and they reconfigured an intersection out there. And so I'm actually off of County Highway MM at this point. And I forgot to look what the number is. I got that letter a couple weeks ago. I don't remember that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, with that, I appreciate the uh, detail that Mr. Payne has uh, provided uh, this evening, and I wanted to uh, try to highlight something that I had brought up um, last year, uh, just to try to help with a little bit of focus from my standpoint and what I see out in my area. And that's uh, some of the, what, what I refer to as crisis intervention, uh, when you have uh, mental health issues or if you have some drug issues. Uh, but also, you know, emergency medical issues. You know, we have uh, first responders, the paramedics, the uh, ambulance services, which, um, you know, they, they struggle for funding too. And uh, those, are, those are interests that um, I see that need to be met. And they need to be met by, I believe, Sheboygan County. And, uh, you know, obviously with the help from the state where the tax revenues can be generated. And um, there has been, from my standpoint, some shift in the funding uh, going more to some of the mental health issues and, and uh, such in Sheboygan County. But I really think that's, that's an initiative that needs to be promoted uh, down the road in years coming up. And uh, I'm also a little bit concerned if we uh, try to shoehorn some of those responsibilities into the sheriff's department because I do believe that it's uh, training and education on the part of the individuals involved who uh, don't necessarily need to be uh, trained in how to how to force people up against walls that don't need to be carrying guns, uh, tasers and the such. They need to have skills on intervening. If you have family disputes, if you have drug issues, uh, that type of thing, or uh, as I mentioned with the medical response that you have to have, you know, the EMT training and et cetera, paramedic training. The Sheriff's Department has a rather unique approach to things and they always come with the training that forces things to happen. And that in and of itself can bring uh, enhanced levels of tension as soon as they arrive. And that's not something that I think really is beneficial to uh, Sheboygan County, to those individual circumstances as they arise. And uh, so I, I uh, think that some, uh, some shift from, from uh, what the Sheriff's Department and what's been shoehorned onto them, that staff, uh, would be better placed in other areas. Uh, that's a, ma a main part of what I wanted to uh, share with you this evening. Um, I think uh, I think that was, there should probably be several goals that we have, and uh, one of them uh, one of them I believe in terms of like the detention center. There had been some talk in years past, and probably is current about uh, expansion. And I think one should give uh, serious consideration to whether that's really the most appropriate place for for uh, expansion or additional services. Um, secondly, uh, in your yearly budget, and that the detention center and planning on the building there and such is, is part of your capital fund, of course, capital expenditures, but from a yearly standpoint, your yearly budget, I think actually some of those services and the cost of, could easily be shifted and might, might uh, have a goal down the road of a reduction in the sheriff's department budgeted expenses of probably as much as 10%, I would think. You know, obviously, as a shift of funds to a different 
uh, different department, whichever one would be most appropriate, but a shift that would provide, I think, better services to the community. You know, and, and I also think of that not just in terms of the mental health or the drugs, but the emergency medical response, which I think is um, something that's been addressed here and there with like tax credits on the state level. But I think that's really not a very meaningful way to address it. I and mean, these people need to be, uh, if not on staff, they need to be paid for the time they put in so that there's um, you know, some stipend of some sort. And in this, this day and age, since we're all here wearing our masks, uh, you know, the responsibility for things like, like uh, contact tracing and such, which is uh, added, added staff and responsibility at the Sheboygan County level. Uh, you know, they're, they're, that's the type of training that they uh, would be easily adaptable to and I think that's something that would be worthwhile thinking about because as much as we all hope we don't have to go through this many more times, um, we may very well be faced with it down the road uh, in not too many years. So those are the two things I wanted to, wanted to bring up. And um, I would, you know, very simply then, you know, thank you for the opportunity to share those thoughts with you this evening. It is the public hearing a once-in-a-year event, and I didn't want to miss it. And I uh, hope that you all stay healthy. And I wish you good luck, Mr. Payne, and Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else that wishes to be heard? And is there anyone else that wishes to be heard? Okay, with that, I declare the public hearing closed. Um, the budget... Oh, wait. Now we do the uh, review of the 2021 proposed budget. All right, starting in your binder, uh, we'll start on page 29 with the transportation fund summary. If anyone has any questions, please use your uh, Quicker to request to speak. Otherwise, next. All right, we'll jump to building services, pages 36 through 38. Supervisor Nelson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I wanted to kind of catch this in before we started the budget, but I think one person was left out of uh, 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 Adam's uh, discussion about the budget, and that's Adam Payne. I, you know, it's a collaborative event, but a, even a collaborative event needs a, a leader. And I just wanted to comment that I think we are so fortunate to have such a strong leadership by our county administrator and such a breadth of information and, uh, uh, on the subject. And I just, I just wanted to say it's just a great job he does. I know he won't say it for himself, so I'm saying it. Thank, Thank you, you, Supervisor Nelson. Supervisor OJ. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my question actually, or statement more than anything, it has to do with something before where we started here. So. Um, Knowing that the state doesn't reward us for not raising our our tax rate up to the levy limit, and we are underneath it, and knowing that things happen, like Mr. Payne said, the Sheriff's Department could need more money next year or the year after, I'm just 
wondering what the thought process is that we don't raise the tax, even though I hate saying it that way, um, to the levy limit and using the money on debt service or something so that, that way we don't lose the ability to collect those funds in future years. I'm going to ask Wendy to help me out on this. I stated when I presented the budget that we're looking at a 1.56% increase in the property tax levy and then our net new net new construction increase went up 1.88 percent. Wendy, Supervisor OG, I think's question is, are we capturing all of the net new construction? And I see her nodding yes. So though our overall property tax levy, it's a good question and good clarification, our overall property tax levy is going up 1.56 percent, we are capturing the entire 1.88 percent net new construction. Wendy, do you want to briefly Explain if that's not putting you too much on the spot what Ab that no. subtle difference is. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, net new construction is towards the increases that we can have for our operating levies, the uh, allowable levy there. Debt service has a different parameter around it. So the both of them together is what comes to our final rate. Our debt service went down 2.28%. So the two together is why you're seeing a lower percentage. But we do capture all net new construction. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next. All right, we'll go back to building services, pages 36 through 38. The next, clerk of courts, pages 39 and 40. Next, Corporation Council, pages 41 and 42. Next, County Administrator, pages 43 and 44. Next, County Board, page 45. Supervisor OJ. I mean, this is the last time I'm going to talk tonight. So, um, there, there's been a lot of questions from people in the last month or two, a lot of misinformation. Um, could you explain, first of all, if a county board supervisor can collect benefits and if they do, like for instance, if we purchase insurance, how that's reflected in the budget? Adam, can you? Once again, I'm going to tag team this with the finance director. So uh, county board supervisors are not eligible for free health insurance. I think that change was made a couple of decades ago. ago. But if they want to purchase it, if they want to purchase health insurance, is that what you're alluding to, Supervisor OG? Yes. Yes. I believe they do have the opportunity to purchase it, though I don't believe we have any county board supervisors that do so. I'm looking at your uh, former chair Wagner. Yeah, what? We yeah, we do not. So it wouldn't be anywhere in the budget. No county board supervisors are currently purchasing health insurance. But for anyone who thinks that if I run for county board, am I going to get this extensive salary and am I going to get all these perks and am I going to get health insurance? And uh, that just simply is not accurate. Uh, Board members receive a very modest salary, modest per diem. They're not eligible for any free benefits. And uh, certainly anybody who has an interest in learning more about running for office or wants to know what that is, our clerk of courts, I mean our county clerk's office manages that, tracks all that, and can share that information. But uh, no, it's people are here on the county board because they want to serve their community. Supervisor Wagner. Um, I just wanted to add to what Adam said there a little bit. I think it was pretty clear, but I understand Supervisor O.J. 
question and why I asked it very frankly is because I think there is some misinformation out there and the bottom line is if you want to take any of those benefits which you have an option to take you pay 100% of the cost of those. That's why it's not reflected in the budget because there is no county levy that goes to that and the individual supervisor pays 100% of the cost. So just want to be clear on that. I think you were clear Adam but I just felt the need to do that. Thank you. And then we'll move on to the next. All right, County Clerk, pages 46 and 47. The next. Court Commissioner, pages 49 and 40, 48 and 49. Next. District Attorney, pages 50 and 51. Next. Employee benefits and insurance, pages 52 and 53. Next. Finance, pages 54 and 55. Supervisor Hoffman. I'm going back a page. Going back a page, what was our percent health insurance increase this past year? I had that question uh, given to me, and I'm sorry I'm a little slow on the uptake here. What was the percent increase? Maybe Adam would address that. I am pleased to report that we were looking at a potential increase of 13%, and ultimately we came in at 8.5%. So still higher than we'd prefer, but overall, uh, we were pleased with the negotiations and what we, we came to, 8.5%. Thank you. Okay. All right, Health and Human Services, pages 56 through 58. Next, Human Resources, pages 59 and 60. Next, Information Technology, pages 61 and 62. Next, Medical Examiner, page 63. Next, Non-Departmental, pages 64 and 65. Next, Planning and Conservation, pages 66 through 69. Next, Property and Liability Insurance, page 70. Next, Register of Deeds, pages 71 and 72. Next, Rocky Knoll, pages 73 through 75. Next, Sheriff, pages 76 through 79. Supervisor Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a, a concern uh, with COVID and everything else. Um, are we going to run short, and I know we are, being on that committee also, um, with monies to um, meet the goal in terms of wages, overtime especially. It concerns me, and I, I, are we budgeting enough for the overtime that, that we're going to get hit with? And we, we know it's coming. That's a good question. Everyone here, the question, are we budgeting enough for overtime for the Sheriff's Department? I'd like to say I think we're budgeting too much. I'd rather not see our overtime costs be what they are at the Sheriff's Department. But uh, as we all know, we're struggling to maintain corrections staff. Uh, good people come and go, and when people leave, uh, there's overlap and, and overtime needs to be expended. 
uh, when we have dispatchers leave, more people need to step up and, and take on additional responsibility. Overtime is expended. And of course, when deputies are out in the field and there's an accident, uh, they don't just go home after the eight hour shift. If they have to stay to see that through, overtime is expended. So uh, this has been an area of discussion, as you know, with law and with finance and with the sheriff and I, and I'd rather see us spending less on overtime. I don't have it committed to memory. Was it around 650,000 or thereabouts? Does anybody have the number in front of them? Uh, Wendy can pull that up quick. Obviously, My concern I, is that we have something else in play, and that's called COVID. Yeah, we, we I mean, I took a risk of throwing a number sick. out there, but I think yeah. it was around that. Anybody see that in front of them for the benefit of our viewers who don't have the documents in front of them? And while Wendy's looking for that, so COVID is having negative implications for most of our departments, certainly Rocky you Knoll, know, Corrections, Public Health. If there is any good news, and I can't really say there's any good news about COVID, but to the state and federal government's credit through the CARES Act funding and route to recovery, we have been reimbursed to the tune of about $2.2 million for COVID-related expenses. So that's helpful. That's not falling on the backs of our property taxpayers. We are concerned with whether or not that will be extended and will we see that opportunity in the year ahead because unfortunately, I think we're all gonna be grappling with this in the year ahead. Uh, right now, we have, I think, through November 16th to uh, get reimbursed for any COVID-related expenses. So I hope at the state and federal government level, they will revisit that. Uh, but yes, you're right, Supervisor Hoffman. Without question, that's having implications for the Sheriff's Department and other areas. Uh, we have not budgeted for COVID-related expenses. And to me, that felt a little uncomfortable. Why aren't we budgeting for something that we know is in, before us? The answer is, is because the grants that we receive, if you budget for those expenses, you're not eligible for the reimbursement. <laughs> well, it certainly wouldn't be prudent, and I certainly don't think our property taxpayers wanna spend more for COVID if they don't have to. So we haven't budgeted for it. We have healthy reserves. We have healthy reserves that if we need to rely on those reserves, we'll do so. And that's what's happened really with the Sheriff's Department and overtime costs. Uh, we'll budget a certain level that we hope is appropriate. We never want to position any department for failure. We, we look to it to be enough, but things happen out of our control. And when that happens, that's why it's so important that we have a healthy and designated fund so we can fill that void. And that is what we've done at the Sheriff's Department of late, and we may have to do so going forward. Wendy, were you or anybody able to get that number for me? Yes, for the Sheriff, they have 650,000 in overtime, and an additional 122 in the comp compensatory time. Say that again, Wendy, I'm sorry. Compensatory to comp time, another 122,000. Okay, but 650,000 in overtime, so I, I think I think we're taking a responsible approach, and I know we have healthy and designated funds that if we need to expend more there, we will. And the reason I know that is because that's exactly what's happening this year, and that's exactly what happened last year. And then as for COVID funding, Supervisor Hoffman, we certainly hope the state and federal government will extend that date and, and continue to provide assistance. Okay, thank you, Adam. It was just a, a concern that I have. Thank you. Transportation Airport Division, pages 80 and 81. Next, Transportation Highway Division, pages 82 through 85. Next, Treasurer, pages 86 through 88. Next, UW Extension, pages 89 and 90. Next, UW Green Bay, Sheboygan Campus, page 91. And next, Veterans Commission, page 92. Next, 
Veteran Service, page 93. Next. That is all. That is all. Okay. With no further motions, the budget review session is now concluded. Pursuant to Section 5.06A8, the 2021 proposed budget is being referred back to the Finance Committee, with, which will submit its final recommendation at, on the budget at the November 3, 2020 County Board meeting. Next is adjournment. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move to adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Supervisor Hoffman. I would be glad to second that. And Thank good you. job tonight, everybody. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Remember to vote. Supervisor Wagner. Supervisor Nelson. Tom and Fran. Supervisor Kulo. We are adjourned. We are adjourned.